I'm here in the garden at St. Stephen's Catholic Church, and today is the seventh day in our novena to St. Anne, the Mother of the Blessed Virgin Mary. A few days ago, we spoke about the Basilica of St. Anne de Beaupre, Anne de Beaupre not being uh, a person different from St. Anne, but Beaupre refers to where the, the Basilica is in Quebec. St. Anne de Beaupre, now what I didn't realize or what I had not yet discovered was the basilica that I read to you about was destroyed by a fire in 1922. The uh, Catholic Encyclopedia from which I was reading was uh, dated about 10 years before that. So what happened in the meantime? Well, there was a tragedy and it was due to fire. And here's the story from the local newspaper on March 29th, 1922 in Quebec. Fire today destroyed the Basilica of St. Anne de Beaupre, famous for its shrine, but the statue of St. Anne, with the historical relics to which miraculous cures have been described, were saved. The flames which started in the sacristy spread rapidly to the monastery of the Redemptorist Fathers, to whose care the shrine had been entrusted, and then to the Basilica. Apparatus sent from this city to the most famous Mecca of religious pilgrims in North America was able to do little to check the blaze. Monastery officials estimated the property damage at $1,200,000, that a greater toll of church relics was not taken, and was due to the heroic efforts of the brothers who risked their lives in saving what they could from the interior of the basilica. Seeing that the Great Basilica was in danger, the, dis the brothers decided to remove everything of value. Reverend Brother Bruneau, at the risk of his life, succeeded in carrying out the precious relics and the statue of St. Anne. The flames soon attacked the basilica through the roof, which the firefighters could not reach with a stream of water. In a few moments, the structure was ablaze from end to end. In an incredibly short time, the two 160-foot towers comprising the facade of the cathedral crashed. The Quebec firemen on their arrival did their utmost to save the structure, but they were handicapped by the fact that the local waterworks could not supply enough water for the engines. They were compelled to lay a line of hose 3,000 feet long to the bank of the St. Lawrence River, which was at low tide when the flames were at their height. The whole village for a time was in terror. At one time it seemed as if destruction faced the little community, which lives for the most part from selling souvenirs to pilgrims during the summer. Just as the villagers had abandoned hope, the wind turned. The only part of the entire group of buildings connected with the basilica which was saved was the old chapel, which housed the shrine before the church was erected. The statue of St. Anne will be removed to this chapel pending the reconstruction of the Basilica. St. Anne de Beaupre, the most famous shrine in the world, each year has attracted hundreds of the lame and blind who flocked there from all parts of Canada and the United States to be cured by miracles of their afflictions. Every householder in the village that could offer shelter leased all his spare rooms at exorbitant prices, and sometimes the throng of unfortunates was so dense that the church had to be thrown open at night. St. Anne de Beaupre, a village of a few thousand inhabitants, is located a few miles from this city. In addition to the thousands of pilgrims who annually visited the shrine, there flocked to the village thousands of tourists to gaze upon the famous pile of crutches cast aside by those who declared themselves miraculously cured. And those, that was taken from the Lowell Sun, Massachusetts on March 29, 1922. Well, you see in there a few little digs that the secular media makes toward the, toward the faithful. Nevertheless, that is what happened to the Basilica of St. Anne de Beaupre in 1922. Now, here is, uh, and I'm taking this from the website of America Needs Fatima, and they continue the story. The architecture of the Basilica was inspired by Roman-style cathedrals, and the building is as stunning as any of the grand cathedrals that one may see in their travels in Europe. So now we're speaking about the new basilica that needed to be built. The 328-foot basilica was built in Romanesque revival style with some Gothic elements and in the shape of a cross. Architects Maxime Ro Roissin, Louis 
uh, and Ode and Joseph Egil Egild Egild Caesar Daost Daost. I'm I'm. Forgive my pronunciations there. Well, anyway, these gentlemen co collaborated on the project from 1923 to 1931. And after the end of the Great Depression, work on the interior resumed in 1937 and was finally completed in 1946. All right. Well, there we are with the update on what happened at St. Anne de Beaupre after after so many centuries. Now this statue then is referred to as the miraculous statue of Saint Anne de Beaupre. Miraculous not only because it survived the fire but because um, well I guess now we have to turn to the miracles. Now I could not find anything about miracles associated with Saint Anne de Beaupre in English. I could only find them in French. And so, um, anyway, this is put through Google Translate, and I hope the translation is, is sufficient. But this is, from a uh, this is from a newspaper, it looks like, in, uh, in Quebec, and it's a translation from, oh boy, well, I'll put it in the notes below where it comes from. The Sanctuary of St. Anne de Beaupre, uh, let's see. The miracles attributed to St. Anne are as diverse as they are numerous. The sanctuary of St. Anne de Beaupre, which lists them, brings back about 40 annually, and the most common are healings, cancer, rare diseases, depression, alcoholism, drugs, testimonies of remission, thanks to the intercession of St. Anne, regularly reach the sanctuary. Okay, well, that gives us an idea of what to pray for during this novena. Uh, cancer, rare diseases, depression, alcoholism, drugs, testimonies of remission. All right. Now we have the story of little Jeremy, who suffered from severe cardiac arrhythmia from birth. He is a good example. After several days in intensive care, his condition stabilized and he returned home. A parent writes to the sanctuary that their constant and confident prayers certainly have something to do with it and that at two years old he is in perfect health. According to the testimonies, many Quebecers owe their coming into the world to divine intervention. Mother of Mary and Grandmother of Jesus, St. Anne would be particularly benevolent toward children and would have granted many couples the joy of being parents. And for others, it would even have avoided a painful separation. Thus, in the 1940s, a young husband had promised St. Anne an annual pilgrimage if he was not called to go and fight in Europe promise was kept. Having escaped conscription for the end of his life, he went each year to St. Anne de Beaupre with his family to thank them. Other miracles attributed to St. Anne may seem more trivial, but nonetheless remain. For those who have benefited from them, a concrete illustration of God's presence in the world. A few years ago in L'Ancienne Lorette, a man found in the house of his deceased parents an image of St. Anne, as well as a fragment of wood from a statue of her. Now near the old house, near the house, an old tree threatened the new electrical entrance, and cutting it was risky due to the proximity of neighboring residences. On the very night of the discovery of the image, a great wind broke the tree, and the man was then able to get rid of it without problem. He thanks St. Anne. Well, those are the miracles I could find. You know, it's very difficult in the modern age to find uh, much talk about miracles. Whereas, you know, you read the Golden Legend or you read some of the older accounts and, and the miracles just abound. Story after story after story. St. Alphonsus is very good at that also, giving story after story after story. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's more difficult in our own day. Nevertheless, miracles happen and we should pray for them. Well, let us go and pray our Novena prayers for the seventh day in the Novena to St. Anne. Now, keeping in mind that you can print out the Novena prayers at a link in the description below the video. Let us go to the Shrine of Mary for our prayer.
And here we are at the Shrine of Mary, and let us pray the prayer for the seventh day of the Novena. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Good Saint Anne, by the power and grace God has placed in you, extend to me your helping hand. Renew my mind and heart. I have unbounded confidence in your prayers. Direct my actions according to your goodness and wisdom. I place myself under your motherly care. Pray that I may receive the grace to lead a devout life on earth, and that I may obtain the everlasting reward of heaven. Amen. Now let us call to mind our intentions for the Novena, considering the types of miracles St. Anne has brought about, considering her apparitions, considering the miraculous conversions, and let us remember to also to pray for the restoration and, and for the saving of the Latin Mass. Um, I'll also remind you of the campaign for a million memorares for the traditional Latin Mass. And you'll see the link below the video for the website of Mothers for Priests, uh, which is also the same website that the Novena Prayer comes from. Let us now pray the prayer to St. Anne. O glorious Saint Anne, you are filled with compassion for those who invoke you and with love for those who suffer. Heavily burdened with the weight of my troubles, I cast myself at your feet and humbly beg of you to take the present intention which I recommend to you in your special care. Please recommend it to your daughter, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and place it before the throne of Jesus so that he may bring it to a happy issue. Continue to intercede for me until my request is granted, but above all, obtain for me the grace one day to see my God face to face and with you and Mary and all the saints to praise and bless him for all eternity. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Saint Anne, help me now and at the hour of my death. Good Saint Anne, intercede for me. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, please subscribe to this video channel and hit the bell to be informed of future videos. Please like this video, share it with a friend, and don't miss a day of prayer with us.